Hey folks, Scott here, and today we're going to show you how I made and mixed the Suicide Manor song. Now, if you are coming over here from Zachary Spence's channel, thank you, glad to have you. If you have not seen the video or know what I'm talking about, um, my good friend Zachary Spence made a pretty funny video where his, him and his buddy were playing guitar and drums and bass along to the song, making a bunch of goofy faces and whatnot. Very funny, very entertaining video. Please go check it out, I will link it in the description. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what I did to make this song. So all the relevant links, like for all the drum samples that I use and so on, are going to be in the description, as well as the timestamps. So let's get to it. Starting with drums, of course, I like to have a very thick and punchy sound, so I make a lot of layers. I put all the tracks, you know, individually here into various, dif various uh, different buses, which I'll show you in a second. There'll be a bunch of effects buses, and that all goes to the master. So working from the individual track here, uh, the... All these shells are from the Metal Factory Studios from Alex Kappa. So I'll leave the links to that in the description. So, uh, the only difference here is the snare 3 is actually the Joey Sturgis Blood uh, snare drum, the pork pie. And I actually reviewed that recently. And I thought it had a really nice top end attack, so I thought I would include it just for funsies. Normally I don't use this snare, but hey, why the heck not? So if we open up the console view here, these are all the tracks. I can close the inspector. All the tracks here on the left and green are drums. Let's go ahead and put all the buses in green of drums. So by far, the most amount of buses that I use are always for drums. Because I have two kicks and three snares, you gotta have a consolidating bus group for both a kick and a snare. I've got a bunch of toms here, so you gotta have a toms group. And then all this I just consider to be, quote, overheads. I put them in overheads. The kick, snare, toms, and the overheads all go to the drums, and then from the drums, that goes right to the master mix, and then I will send these various uh, buses to various uh, effects that I have. So a drum room, a plate, a reverb, and what I like to call kill, which is just some parallel compression. So in order to keep the video from not being 17 hours long, I'll just go ahead and I'll AB with all the effects on and all the effects off, and then I'll, I'll maybe I'll just open the, uh, the plugin right away. You can see what I did. But I don't think it makes much sense to go through absolutely everything in absolute detail because it'll get really, really, really boring really quickly. We will just sew the drums for now, and none of these effects are going to be here, so it's just drums. Okay, so nice, thick, bright, big, open, whatever other adjective you want to use, drum sound. Look at the kick really quickly here. Now what I like to do typically is in the beginning, none of these effects actually are here yet. And this is just EQ, right? So in the beginning, these don't exist. And I'll typically work in terms of drums, I'll work from the bus to the individual track. So if I was starting here with just the kick, none of this would, would exist, none of this would be here either. And I would literally be starting with just this kick sound. So let's just go ahead and start A being everything and getting everything activated so you can hear the final kick sound that I came up with. Okay, so that's what I came up with with just the bus processing. And that already starts to sound pretty good. But there's still a little bit of some high mids and some other boxiness going on. Let's go take care of that. So I would start, I would like insert this from my menu. And start with the EQ and start hunting. So let's do that. Okay, some more boxing is taken out. And now it's time to really show you some box. So here we go. There it is. 
all the moves I've done. And then this will actually get sent to the room, as you can see, and the parallel compression bus we will look at in a moment. So that is the final kick drum sound. Punchy, all right? Now, moving chron chronologically or just logically, I'll go to the snare, same thing. With these three snares here, this EQ would not be here. And obviously none of this would be here. So let's just, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I just won't narrate it this time. Let's just start right away with the filter. All right, so let's go. So what Transify is doing is that we have this transients here in the mid that I'm just, I'm putting up a little bit so that I can have more attack and snapping this to the snare. That's all I'm doing here. It's a very, very, very subtle change. And then of course I always put the clipper on to bring up the volume transient. All right, so then, obviously, this is what I have with all three snares and one bus. Still hear some problems, so let's get to that. Solo this snare here. So this is taking care of that super annoying doing, doing, doing ring. And this is just some 4K noise. Getting rid of that in here. So 4K noise, but I... Just a little bit more of the washiness because this particular snare is very deep. And it's a reason why I always layer it with practically everything. Because it adds a, a deep thickness to everything. Okay. And finally we have the Joey Sturgis Blood Series snare. Which had a number of pretty strange frequencies. Go ahead and A, B. So a lot of nasty ringingness and resonance, but no problem with all that's taken care of. And finally, at the end of the day, we get a this. We get we get a snare that sounds like this. All right. Now moving on to the toms. Now all of the toms here, all these three toms, are from the Alien. A custom drum kit from Metal Factory Studios, and I have manually silenced them. I uh, don't recommend you using a, a gate because you're <laughs> you're going to be setting automation settings for the gate because it's going to open and close too quickly if your parts are too fast. Blah blah blah. It's a lot easier just to manually splice them and fade them. It takes a moment, but it's actually quicker than trying to set up your gate every five minutes. So after doing that. Again, same exact approach. I come with, a, with, in this case, the SSL channel. I always raise the 8K to 10K a little bit because this is the attack that will come through and cut through the mix so you can actually hear the toms. And I will always high pass them around 40 to 50 because you don't need it. And then I just put a clip run right away because I already know that's basically all I want to do. And because I've worked with these particular samples a bunch, that's basically all I need to do. And then the same thing with these samples. There's just cleaning up the mids in all of them. Okay. And that's all there is to it for processing toms. So let's listen to the toms by themselves. Let's find a nice fill. Maybe this looks like a nice fill. A loop. It's playing. Nope. Okay, so nice sounding toms.
Let's go with LPSSL, the SSL channel. All right, so let's let's start taking some of these uh, EQ like this one. Disable it. See how boxy it sounds. Turn it back on. There you go, nice and smooth, and like a tom. And that's pretty much that. Now all the symbols that I do from basically here to here. Uh, I do attack them individually because they all because they're all samples, okay? And they're not like in an overhead microphone. They're all individual samples. So they all have individual resonance spots that you need to take out. Uh, it's just the way it is. But another thing too is I like to do a high pass, okay, at various areas around the 200 area. If you did them all at 200, you would actually build up a little bit of uh, of space here just after 200, and we don't want that. So I do that and I resonance hunt. And I put everything into the overheads bus here with a little bit of a little bit of a shelf here just to add some sparkle. Take out some more resonances with when all of the symbols are brought together in one bus. This is my comp my with my overhead setting with a slow uh, slow release. Uh, excuse me, fast release, slow attack, which really brings out you know the attack. Analog off always. All right. And then finally, L1, which is mostly just for some volume control. So let's have a listen to what the symbols sound like. Let's take off the loop. Let's, let's see if I can find something. Let's go with the... So yeah, with the ride symbol, the if I remember correctly, had a pretty pretty bad uh, resonance area. Yeah, okay. So so I'll show you what I mean by resonance hunting. You hear that dip? The difference is night and day. So you have to resonance hunt for all your symbol uh, samples. You just have to do it. So once all that is done, my kick, snare, and toms overhead, they all go to a drums bus where I do an input gain of minus 12 and then a JST clip of plus 12. It's pretty simple. And at the end of the day, you will get something a little bit like this. Now, of course, you need to add a room, a plate, reverb, and a kill. And I'll do just that. I use Trueverb for my room sound. I use my IRL for my uh, my my plates. And reverb, just Trueverb. And SSL comp for parallel compression with, again, some EQ adjustments for the parallel compression. So if we use all the drums with the room, plate, everything, we get something like this. And that's that. So that is the end of drums processing. Kind of in-depth and complicated and by far takes the most amount of time, at least for me. Which is why I like doing bass next because it's so incredibly simple. Now for bass, I used Panda Bass simply because it has a low G note. Bass of the Gods only goes to a low A. So I have, ba uh, excuse me, I have Panda Bass here split into a sub and a grit track. It's the same track, just copy and pasted to two separate tracks. Open up the console here. Okay, so I do some individual processing first. For the subtrack, I'm only concerned about basically 125 and below, the sub frequencies. What I do here is I crank the threshold until it's a, it's a good average of where the meter is bouncing. And then I just find where it sits well in the mix, so, forth and so on and so forth. It's never always going to be set numbers like this. 
the meter is going to be bouncing. You're just going to have to find the place for it. In grit, it's sort of the same thing, but instead I'm curious about 800 and above only. I don't care about the low mids and base because we already did that with the sub. Now, the only extra step here is you're going to have to take care of some really nasty frequencies that are going to pop up because now you're soloing this region. Let me show you what I mean. So we have two here at uh, 884 and 1888. So let's just look at this. As you heard, it's almost like both frequencies have like this like metal nasty scraping sound. And you're always going to find something like that in the upper grit region of the bass. So be aware for that. After that, again, it's a limiter just for threshold and out ceiling to taste of the song. Both of that goes to a bass bus, which gets more simple processing. Now we get a brick wall here at 70 hertz. The reason why I don't do 70 hertz, for example, here and here is because what I just mentioned previously about keeping the phase of the EQs in line. So we'll keep the phase in line here and both are going to be uh, high pass at 70 hertz. And then just L1, man, L1. Joel Wanasek would be proud. Moving on to the uh, rhythm guitars, you're going to see here that I went a bit crazy. Uh, I quad tracked. And then I have the really stupid idea of double tracking with a different impulse. And uh, why? I don't know why, but why not? Uh, these were all done with the Mercurial U530, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, this is the modern 30 impulse, and then this is the vintage 30 impulse. I did not process them individually, as you can see here. I put everything to a bus. Sometimes I process individually, sometimes I don't. It depends how I feel. I kind of really liked already the tone that I had, so I decided to do everything at once. Now, the only thing I did do is I separated the modern from the vintage because it's two totally different EQing moves that I had to do. So starting with the filtering, filtering from 98 and 10,000 on the modern. Uh, the desucculator, which is actually an amazing plugin. I'll prove that to you in a moment. Resonance hunting. Uh, keeping the low mids in check. And L1, as always. So let's go ahead and solo the rhythm guitars here. Now this is all four of these, the modern ones. Listen, and I'll A-B the plugins for you. So pretty significant difference, but just tone shaping, really. Everything stays the same, just getting rid of that extra noise that we have there. Moving on now to the Vintage 30s. I'll do the same thing. I'll just, uh, it's the same exact chain, just different settings. So let's turn all this off. And let's press play. Well, that's all I did. Now you put uh, both guitars together. And you get some crazy stuff like that. Just had a lot of fun trying something new. Not sure if I'll do that again, but yeah, it was cool. Now coming up, we have just some uh, uh, specialty effect instruments, the voice stuff that I did, and the effects on here. This, th these are all from Sound Iron Instruments. This is called the Death Whistle, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's actually just, 
it's a it's a skull that the <laughs> it's a skull the Aztecs drew a hole through and then blew in it like it's a whistle. Uh, therefore, death whistle, and it sounds. Yeah, here, here it is, right here. Just listen to it; it's awesome. That's all. That's it. All I did was add some reverb to that. Otherwise, it's, that's what death whistle. Uh, after that, again, another one from Sound Iron. This is from the Metal Tones. Uh, I don't know if it's an effects pack or whatever it is, but it's from Metal Tones. Nothing crazy there. This is called Pie Lighter. Uh, also from uh, Sound Iron, the Metal Tones pack. It was it had this idea of like being a clock, but not sounding like a tubular bell from an orchestra. So I I, I liked it. Yeah, so I, I just thought that was pretty cool. And then finally here, the APE actually stands for Apocalypse Percussion uh, Elements, which is again also from Sound Iron, and I'm using it more for like some just nice stabs and, and attack. So we just solo that. Perfect for a mix. Uh, what I did was similar to what I would do with like a snare drum, for example, just boosted the AK a little bit so you could actually hear it, uh, hear the strikes in the mix. A little bit of resonance hunting, but that's about it. Uh, I don't think I did much with this on the bus aspect. Uh, no, I did not. Just, yeah, I took off the lows because you don't need them. That's all. That's all. So now we're going to talk about these quote unquote vocals that I've done. I was sitting here, I was like, huh, I'm curious. I have a microphone. Maybe I should try something interesting. And so everything that you hear here, this main message, all these other lines that I did, just one take wonders, you know, cause I would do it and I would laugh and I was like, yeah, what, what the heck? I'll keep it. Uh, the only other thing that I did here is I actually did perform these four vocals and they, um, how can, I'm not a vocalist, so don't expect much out of that. But processing these actually were pretty easy because Joy Sturgis has a plugin called Gang Reduction, which makes vocal processing basically child's play. And I didn't do much. I'll show you what I did here. Uh, this is a special effect, not really a special effect, but it's a preset here in Sonatus. It's called the telephone. And that makes it sound like you know, you're on a telephone. So it lowers the quality a little bit, makes it lo-fi. And then, like I said, Gang Reduction. That's, that's, all it, that's it, Gang Reduction. Uh, for the actual low gutturals that I did, I took out, I filtered that 100, took out some resonance, and then gang reduction. You know, that's basically it. Uh, I have some reverb here, true verb, some EQ from the reverb that I didn't like, and some delay to thicken it out a tad, tad more. And that's basically all I did. I'm not going to solo this because... My voice is just too sexy. I don't want you to lose focus of the video. So we're going to move on to the cinematic effects where I have some gunshots here. Just I had a bunch of gunshots, and then I bounced them all to a single track so it was easier to manage. These strings here, this is from the orchestral library that I have called Complete Composers Collection. The strings and horns. Very, very simple thing. Uh, let's solo this. Now, this is just straight up for layering. I didn't actually anticipate these to really show up themselves in the mix. I just wanted them to exist in the background. Just like you you don't hear them, but you feel them. And with this, in this case, it's just typical string editing here. Take out some crappy frequencies that make them sound fake. Try to get some air under them, so on and so forth. Sort of similar with the horns. Get the frequencies that make them sound fake. Get rid of them. Try to add some high end. And that brings us finally to the effects. Now these are all effects made by my good buddy Tim. Uh, he has his own studio in Germany and he makes really awesome effects. And he lets me use them because he's a nice guy like that. And that's basically it. You know, these are not EQ'd in any way. This is basically just uh, 
volume fader knob writing, as you can see. Maybe, maybe I did. Hold on. Effects. Send effects. Nope. Just used L1, as always. So that's pretty much it. So that is the entire mix, guys. From beginning to end, you know, conception, uh, recording, mixing, remixing, remixing again. It's a, it was about three days, and it was a lot of fun. And it's been a pleasure for me to show you how I made this in the video. Hope it didn't get too long, and if it is, I hope it was interesting. And again, if you haven't seen that ridiculously awesome video that Zach made, go check it out because it's a good time. And go subscribe to Zach because he's a nice guy, all right? Plus, he's Canadian, so I mean... I mean, that's automatic subscription, isn't it? So that does it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, consider a like rating and consider subscribing. Also consider dinging that bell so you can get an email notification every time I upload a video. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one.